Hello everyone, this is Graziella from Method Gynecology and Evolution and today we're talking with Arnaud Tarox, um, who is in Canada and the, we will be talking about his work titled Sensitivity of Stable Isotope Mixing to Variation in Isotopic Ratios, Evaluating Consequences of Lipid Extraction and this is a work that Arnaud has done with colleagues and is published in Method Gynecology and Evolution. Hello Arnaud, how are you? I'm uh, doing fine, and you? Very well, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, the, the questions I wanted to ask you um, are, the first one is, what is the main idea behind your work? Well, the main, the main question behind our work is that um, recently there, have, uh, there has been a lot of papers published on the problem of lipids in stable isotope analysis, and it's a particular imp particularly important problem for uh, diet reconstruction studies. The problem of lipids is that we there is no consensus yet whether we should extract them or not prior to uh, diet reconstruction studies for um, stable isotope ratios, and uh, we first wanted to to try to find an answer to this question, but quite quickly we discovered that it's not really possible to find a general answer uh, to this question, and we then wanted to to go a bit further try to understand why in some systems, uh, for instance, it would be uh, better to extract lipids and why in some systems it would be better not to extract them. The problem with extraction is that it's, it's time consuming and it's costly as well, it's a lot of lab work on uh, the samples. So that was the main, uh, the main idea behind our work. Oh, very interesting. And uh, how do you think then the results from your work plans methodology in ecology and evolution? Well, our work represents a step for, towards a better understanding of, uh, of this important issue, which is lipid extraction in uh, stable isotope analysis and more uh, generally uh, isotopic variation, which can, due to, can be due to other, uh, other factors. So all ecology, uh, all ecological studies based on stabilized analysis and trying to reconstruct diet using mixing models can be uh, can be interested in this uh, in this method, I think. So for this uh, purpose, we developed a three-tiered approach to help decision making uh, regarding the need to extract lipids or not in, uh, in these studies. So if I can show you uh, briefly. We first work at uh, the individual isotopic ratios. Before any lipid removal, uh, you have a given uh, stable isotopic ratio for a given uh, prey or predator in a system, for instance, which is represented here. And then after lipid removal, you may have a shift in the isotopic ratios, both in carbon and nitrogen in this example. Um, and that's what we represent here. So the first question is to see at the scale of the individual isotopic ratios if you have any modification of these ratios. The second step is to kind of zoom out and try to see at the scale of the mixing space, so um, at the scale of all the prey and predators in the, in the mixing system, in a way in the carbon and nitrogen uh, space we can see here. Uh, in the middle here you can see a consumer and some artificial uh, prey uh, created for this, but the important thing is that before and after lipid removal, you can observe that there can be a very uh, important change in the geometry of the system in this mixing space. So that can be a sign that lipid extraction would potentially have uh, an important effect on the results of, uh, of uh, uh, diet reconstruction afterwards. The last step is uh, concerned the diet, so the diet reconstruction. Before lipid removal, you can have a certain diet, and if you remove lipid from your samples, you could uh, end up with a very different diet, so a very different ecological interpretation of your results. And that was the important pro point in our study, that it, even if you have statically, statistically significant uh, differences uh, uh, in stabilized topic ratio, uh, in the beginning, maybe you won't have any ecological uh, uh, effect in the end, or maybe you'll have a very important ecological effect in the end uh, in terms of diet of consumers. So 
To do that, we develop a simulation tool using a mixing model and trying to um, to to calculate diets, to estimate diets for different combinations of uh, of, lip, of lipid extraction in a way in uh, in all prey in a given system. So, if I can give you an example of this. Here you have two systems. These are real systems, the systems we used with an Arctic fox and uh, five potential prey. Uh, on the left side of this graph, you have the system with the bulk samples which have not been lipid extracted. And on the right side, you have the same samples which have been lipid extracted, all of them. So you can see that there is a quite important change in the geometry of the system. Mm. So that's an extreme case when all the prey have been lipid extracted, for instance. And obviously to test that, we, we conducted the lipid extraction in the lab before. But the idea of our uh, simulation tool is that before doing any lipid extraction, you would test it with the system and simulate it and see if it has a strong impact on the diet uh, estimates you will construct or if it has no impact at all. And then, based on these results, you can decide whether you should remove the lipids or correct the lipids in your samples or not. In these particular examples, what we have in the end is a graph, is a graph like that. On the y-axis, you have the estimated proportion of each prey in the diet. And on the x-axis, you have for each prey uh, this estimated proportion when it uh, when it has not been lipid extracted, so B for bulk tissue, and when it has been lipid extracted, so LE. And then you can see, depending on the prey, you can have different effects on lipid extraction on the, on the estimated diet. So the main idea is, uh, is to, to, to provide researchers with a tool which is freely available uh, to, to be able to conduct these simulations here. And then this is a particular example, but for any system, you can run uh, simulations for all combinations of shifts in isotopic ratios in your system, for all prey or just one of them or two of them. And um, then based on this, you can have a summary of these results and see how your system is, is reacting in a way to different uh, sources of variation and different uh, amplitudes of variation in your isotopic ratios. Yeah, that sounds like a very interesting tool, very useful. But how how do you think? Um, uh, well, I guess it could. It's it's clear how it could be applied because it could you could um, use it in a predictive way before you decide what to do with your data. But who could apply it then? All the researchers who are uh, dealing with uh, uh, stable life of studies. In, with the goal to, I mean, with the goal of uh, reconstructing diets, estimating diets in any system, could be interested in this tool. Um, the this tool is not only uh, direct, I mean, aimed at people who are uh, dealing with lipids problem, for instance. It's it's one part of uh, of the variation you can have in isotopic ratios, but you you can have, as I mentioned before, you can have many other factors influencing the isotopic ratios uh, in your systems. And I think um, this tool could provide a very interesting way to also test this the influence of this variation, whatever the cause is uh, in, in a system. And it's probably also a good way to see how a system is reacting to this variation and how stable it is in a way. So it should lead, to my mind, to a better understanding of, uh, of, a, of, of a given traffic system. Excellent. Thank you, then. Thank you, Arnaud. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank you very well.